to ASEAN News. Still with me, Vanessa. Timor-Leste Parliament condemns military coup in Myanmar. Vice President of the National Parliament of Timor-Leste, Maria Angelina Sarmento, says, as member of the ASEAN Parliamentary for Human Rights, they condemn the intervention of the military towards the election results in Myanmar. We would like to uh, express our solidarity to our fellow Myanmar people who have just um, faced very long depressing issue of uh, re military uh, regime in Myanmar. Uh, and the shocking news of the uh, illegal detention of the Aung San Suu Kyi from the uh, National League for Democracy, uh, who is recently faced a very shocking uh, the illegal detention by the military regime. Uh, therefore, we'd like to express our solidarity to our fellow Myanmar, Timor-Leste, uh, especially Timor-Leste parliamentarians who uh, involved in the ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights, uh, deeply express our solidarity and our profound uh, sentiment about the recent uh, riots and the recent uh, results of the election. Democratically, the people of Myanmar elected their democratic leaders, where the National League for Democracy uh, won the majority seats in the parliament. Uh, however, the um, military regime backed, uh, backed up few political parties and they claimed that the result of the election has a lot of uh, fraud and irregularities. But when we look at the uh, people's expression about the election itself, uh, it shows that the people of Myanmar is uh, willing to have uh, freedom and democracy, human rights to be prevailed in, in Myanmar. Sarmento also appealed for an open dialogue to solve the problem, citing Myanmar's constitution, which allows 25% of parliamentary seats to the military. Other world leaders and organizations such as the UN and UK have also condemned the action while the newly elected US President Joe Biden raised the threats of new sanctions to Myanmar. Myanmar citizens staging demonstrations opposing military coup in the country. Supporters of Myanmar's military marches and held a rally as the military allayed concerns that the armed forces might attempt to seize power. Around 200 people carrying flags and banners marched through the commercial capital of Yangon, chanting in support of the military and against foreign intervention in the country's internal affairs. The crowd walking in the shadow of Shwedagon Pagoda, Myanmar's most important Buddhist site, called on government and the election commission to resolve complaints of fraud. The rally came as the military, in statement saying, will protect and follow the constitution. Myanmar's election commission rejected the military's allegation of vote fraud, saying there were no errors big enough to affect the credibility of the vote. The army's repeated allegations of irregularities in the election, in which National League for Democracy win 83% of seats, have led to the most direct confrontation yet between the civilian government and the military, which is an awkward power-sharing agreement. Political tensions escalate this week when a military spokesman declined to rule out a coup ahead of the new parliament convening and warned the armed forces could take action if its complaints about the fraud were not addressed. Ruling party spokesman says Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been detained by military. The spokesman for the Governing National League for Democracy says Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi and other senior figures have been detained. The move came after days of escalating tensions between the civilian government and the powerful military that steered fears of a coup in the aftermath of an election the army says was fraudulent. Spokesman Myon Myunt tells Reuters by phone that Suu Kyi, President Win Myint and other leaders have been taken in the early hours of the morning. Phone lines to Naipitao, the capital, are not reachable. A military spokesman did not answer phone calls seeking comment. A National League for Democracy lawmaker, who asks not to be named for fear of retaliation, say another of those detained in Hartan Mint, a member of the party's Central Executive Committee. 
Thailand police scuffle with protester at demonstration against Myanmar coup. <laughs> Heavily armed police in Thailand's capital clash with a group of demonstrators who are protesting against a coup that took place in Myanmar. At least two people are injured at the protest, which take place outside Myanmar's embassy in Bangkok, where at least 200 people gather including Thailand and Myanmar citizens. The police arrested at least two people according to the Thailand legal monitoring group Lo, as protesters hurled traffic cones towards the advancing police officer. Myanmar's military seized power in a coup against the democratically elected government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, who was detained along with other leaders of her National League for Democracy party in early morning raids. The army says it carries out the detentions in response to the election fraud, according to the statement on a military-owned television station. <laughs> The United Kingdom Prime Minister condemns Myanmar coup and the arrest of Aung San Suu Kyi. Regarding to the military coup, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson condemns the coup in Myanmar after the military in the Asian country seized power, saying Aung San Suu Kyi and other civilian leaders must be freed. Myanmar's military seized power in a coup against the democratically elected government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, who was detained along with other leaders of her National League for Democracy party. The army says it had carried out the detentions in response to election fraud. Johnson serving as Britain Foreign Minister Mit Suu Kyi in Myanmar's capital of Naypyidaw in February 2018. Serena, I think, was, was here last time. VK, who's with the, the media team. Regarding the military coup in Myanmar, chairman of the United Nations urges the military to respect the freedom of the people. United Nations spokesman says United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres strongly condemns the detention of Myanmar's Aung San Suu Kyi and other political leaders and urges the military leadership to respect the will of the people of Myanmar. In which the Secretary General strongly condemned the detention of Don Aung San Suu Kyi, the State Councillor, as well as President Yu Win Mint, and other political leaders. And that was obviously on the eve of the opening session of Myanmar's new parliament. Mr. Guterres said he expressed his grave concern regarding this declaration of the transfer of all legislative, executive, and judicial powers to the military. These developments represent a serious blow to democratic reforms in Myanmar. The Secretary General stresses that the November 8th general election provide a strong mandate for the National League for Democracy, reflecting the clear will of the people of Myanmar to continue on their hard-won path to democratic reform. Mr. Guterres urges the military leadership to respect the will of the people of Myanmar and adhere to democratic norms with any differences to be resolved peaceful dialogue. All leaders must act with the greater interest of democratic reform, engaging in meaningful dialogue, refraining from violence, and fully respecting human rights and fundamental freedoms. The Yarek adds the United Nations fears the coup in Myanmar will worsen the situation for some 600,000 Rohingya Muslims still in the country. Myanmar's military seized power in a coup against the democratically elected government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, who was detained along with other political leaders in early morning raids. A 2017 military crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine state sent more than 700 Rohingya Muslims fleeing into Bangladesh. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Western states accused the Myanmar military of ethnic cleansing. You know, I think our estimates say there are about 600,000 Rohingyas that remain in Rakhine State, including 120,000 people who are, you know, effectively uh, confined to, to camps. They cannot move freely and have extremely limited access to basic health and educational services. So. Our fear is that the events may make the situation worse for them. Diplomat says the 15-member United Nations Security Council plans to discuss Myanmar in a closed meeting. China, backed by Russia, shielded Myanmar from any significant council action after the 2017 military crackdown. Beijing and Moscow are counseled to veto powers along with France, Britain and the United States. The Myanmar army says it had detained Suu Kyi and others in response to election fraud, handing power to the military chief Myung Ong Hling and imposing a state of emergency for one year. 
Rohingya refugees grief military coup want to return home. Rohingya refugees who fled violence in Myanmar condemn the overthrow of a democratically elected government by the military in the country. More than one million Muslim Rohingya refugees are seeking shelter in camps in southern Bangladesh. They want to return to their home. There are no words to describe how much we miss our home. We want to go back home. Please find a solution for us to go back home. The vast majority of them fled Buddhist majority Myanmar in 2017 from a military which led crackdown that UN investigator says was executed with genocidal intent assertions that Myanmar denies. Myanmar's military seized power in the coup against the democratically elected government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, who was detained along with other leaders of her party in early morning raids. Western nations condemned the sudden turn of events, which derailed years of efforts to establish democracy in the poverty-striking country and raised even more questions over the prospect of returning a million Rohingya refugees. A UN-backed repatriation process has failed to take off despite multiple attempts from Bangladesh, which has now started sending some refugees to an isolated island of the Bay of Bengal. <coughs> Iran asks Indonesia to explain seizure of tanker accuses of illegal oil transfer. An Indonesian Coast Guard spokesman tells Reuters the Iranian and Panamanian flag vessels seized by Indonesian authorities for suspecting illegal oil transfers are making their way to dock in Riau Island province for further investigation. The two super tankers with crew members from Iran and China are seized in Indonesia waters near Kalimantan Island. The MT horse owned by the National Iranian Tanker Company and MT Freya, managed by Shanghai Future Ship Management Co., have a total of 61 crew members on board. The spokesman says some crew remains in the super tankers, but others are detained on Coast Guard ships for questioning while the investigation underway. The ships are caught red-handed transferring oil from empty horse to empty Freya and that there is an oil spill around the receiving tanker. Euron says that empty horse is seized over a technical issue and had asked Indonesia to explain the seizure. Vietnam registered nine new cases of coronavirus in Hanoi after the ruling party held its Congress. Vietnam reports nine more new COVID-19 infections early as the country's first outbreak for nearly two months spread to Hanoi, the capital, where the ruling Communist Party is currently holding its key five-yearly Congress. The Ministry of Health says the new cases, including one in Hanoi and eight in nearby Haiphong City and Hai Duong, Quang Ni and Bac Ninh provinces, brought the total number of cases in the outbreak to 93. The ruler adds that the case in Hanoi is linked to an airport worker in Quang Ninh province who tested positive. Antivirus measures were stepped up at the Congress venue, with all support staff and media in attendance scheduled for another round of testing, the third for those involved since the run-up of the event began. The Health Ministry previously says it conducted 10,000 tests in association with the Congress. The total number of cases recorded since the coronavirus was first detected in Vietnam a year ago stands at 1,651, including imported cases, with 35 deaths. South Korea says North Korean nuclear plan only based on ideas never used as an official project. South Korea's energy ministry says that documents about the potential plan to build a nuclear power plant in North Korea is only an idea but it has never been pursued as an official project. South Korean broadcaster SBS unveiled a prosecution indictment listing more than a dozen documents from the energy ministry that suggest a previously unknown project to set up a nuclear plant in North Korea. This raised questions over whether South Korea's President Moon Jae-in had sought any nuclear energy program for North Korea as part of his drive to restart inter-Korean economic cooperation. Many of the files were dated to May 2018, a month after Moon held his first summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. 
Shin Hedong, spokesman of South Korea's Energy Ministry, says the files are internal documents that they discuss only among ministry officials after the summit. As an idea to consider in the future when the two Koreas can potentially reopen economic exchanges. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, please wash your hands, and continue to maintain social distancing rule. Do not forget to use your mask. Bye.